This is an oral history interview conducted for the Witness to War Serving a Nation project at Nauset Regional High School on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. For the sake of this interview, please state your full name and community in which you now reside. My name is David K. Harwood and I live in Brewster, Mass. Right. So, um, how, was, how was your childhood like before your military service? My childhood was fine. I was one of eight children who grew up in Wadman, Massachusetts. Like, what were your, what were some memorable experiences as a child? As a child? I don't know, I love sports. Um, remember I had, I had a paper route with a bicycle, we used to deliver um, 90 papers every morning. Uh, church, youth, youth group at church. Um, played Little League, you know, played uh, junior high school uh, sports, played high school sports. Just, um, you know, it was fine. Do you have any, did you have any ideas about military life before, as a child? No, uh, I didn't. Um, I um, just, as it turned out, when I got out of, got out of high school, um, uh, I wasn't really ready to go to college, so I said, okay, I'll go into the service. So I went into the service for four years. And then after the service, I went, I went, into, I went into college. Where'd you go to school? At... I mean, college, uh, high school? Yes. I went to Newton South High School in Newton, Mass. It was, um, we lived in Wabin, which is one of the villages of Newton. Uh, as a child, did you have any family who were in the military? No. Um, my oldest brother was uh, in uh, ROTC uh, at Northeastern, but he never actually did any active um, service. Um, I went into the Navy, and then after I was out of the Navy, one of my younger brothers went into the Navy, and he was in the Navy also. So only the two of us in the, in the family that were in the service. So, um, when you joined the military, what made you join? What made you want to join, really? I just wanted to... Um, um, I wasn't ready to go to college, and I figured that I would just be wasting my time if I'd gone to college, went to college, and uh, so I said, okay, let's let's try the military for a while. So I went and, uh, with another friend of mine who was a high school friend, uh, we joined the Navy. All right. Uh, what kind of friends did you make in the service? I made lots of friends in the service. Um, you know, you, there are people from all different walks of life and, and different economic backgrounds and everything. Um, when you get living um, in small quarters, like on a ship, um, you just you get along with people. Uh, you you learn to get along with people. Um, I have all kinds of different friends, uh, different you know culture, different uh, ethnic background. Didn't much matter. Um, do you have any like uh, enjoyable or good memories from serving in the military? Yeah, I have lots of them. Um, I um, went to boot camp for um, uh, about nine, ten weeks, and then I went to uh, school, uh, graduate, uh, a damage control firefighting and nuclear chemical biological warfare school, uh, and then after that I, was, I went to my first ship, was down in Connecticut, it was a dry dock. Um, I was there for almost two and a half years in Connecticut, and then uh, after that, uh, for my last year and a half in the Navy, I was on an aircraft carrier out of Long Beach, and we, we made a, um, a Westpac cruise, they call West, West Western Pacific cruise uh, during the Vietnam War, and we were operating off of Vietnam War for about six, off of Vietnam for about six months. Did you make any, did you make a particular decision with your with, with what your job in the Navy was, or I chose what I was going to do in, 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 in there because at at um, when you're at uh, boot camp, there's different. They expose you to these different rates that you could go in into, and um, my exposure to the to the being a damage controlman was one that I liked, and so that's what I went into. It's now called R. 
uh, repairman, I guess, or, or hull technician. It has to do with um, firefighting, woodworking, nuclear chemical, biological warfare, watertight integrity on a ship. Um, it's, it's, it's keeping the ship afloat. What were some particularly memorable struggles in your during this for well, during this service? I didn't really have too many struggles. I um, I was very fortunate in that the jobs that I had, uh, I was pretty good at, and um, my my rate, I was I was able to advance quite rapidly. Um, I became a um, a second class petty officer in less than two years. Um, for a number of reasons, one they were pushing, uh, pushing rate. They wanted to have you know more people coming up in through the ranks quickly because of the Vietnam War, the buildup of troops, um, but also because I was actually I was very good at what I was doing, uh, and and now nowadays today in present day, it would take you probably seven years of being in in the service to to reach the rank that I reached in less than two. Um, that was mem that was that was memorable. I was and I was I was very proud of that. Um, when I was on the dry dock down in Connecticut, we dry docked submarines, and we you know a submarine would come in, we would lift it right up out of the water, and then you know we didn't have to work on the submarine. The repair crews did that, but we um, built the blocks. I had to build the blocks that the submarine would sit on. If you ever seen a dry dock, and a, there's a, a wooden keel blocks and everything, and side blocks that the um, the boat or the ship or whatever has to sit on, and uh, we built those. Um, so that that was that was a you know it was a good job, and we did a good we did a good job doing it. Uh, and when I got onto the uh, aircraft carrier, um, I was actually teaching damage control, uh, and I would fly over occasionally to the destroyers. We had six destroyers in our group. And every once in a while, I would fly over to them uh, and teach some classes. Um, the, the, a, a helicopter would take me over and I'd drop out of the helicopter down onto the back of the destroyer. Um, so that was memorable. Um, one thing that wasn't pleasant was uh, while we were on a, um, an organization, the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization over in um, South China Sea um, during the Vietnam War, um, we operated with the USS Melbourne, uh, the Australian ship Melbourne. And she, and in silent running and in, and in no lights running at night, turned the wrong direction and cut one of our destroyers right in half. Uh, in less than a minute, the whole front end of that destroyer went down and they lost a little over 100 men. Um, the back end of the ship was able to be secured and one of the guys that helped secure it happened to have been on the dry dock with me in Connecticut. So when we picked up the survivors, um, I got to reminisce with him, and he was kind of glad to see me, and I glad to see him. Uh, but that was one of the tragedies of our of our ship, of our trip. Um, but most of it was pretty smooth. It went it went pretty well. Well, when you when you joined the military, what did your parents or family members think when you joined? Well, they thought it was fine. Um, they 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 you know I wasn't going to. Uh, go to college, and, and not yet anyway, and um, so I chose to go do the military, and uh, as it turned out, it, it turned out very well for me. I um, did some growing up while I was in there, and then when I did go to college, uh, I was ready to go to college, and, and I studied well and, and uh, did well. So while you were in your service, what did you think of the, what did you think of the people who you were fighting, who the, who we were fighting over in Vietnam? I um, can't say that I was very um, happy with them, and um, even to this day, I probably have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder for um, for Asians, um, whether that be good, bad, or otherwise. Um, but the exposure that I had to them was not pleasant, and um, therefore, I have a little bit of unpleasantness when I when I when I think of them. Um, I was not in Vietnam per se. I was on a ship, and we got within 50 miles. We were close. Um, we saw lots of activity. Um, we didn't get specifically shot at or anything, um, but I know lots of people that did and lots of people that were in country, and it was not a pleasant experience. And um, 
So I don't really have pleasant memories concerning the enemy, if you will. Um, and I don't think that'll ever change. It's just going to be with me. For those who dodged the draft during the Vietnam War, what did you think of them? I didn't think too much of them at all, but I, you know, if people um, had an educational deferment, that was fine. Um, if people had a uh, um, a deferment because of their of their age or, or their, um, their 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 um, family situation, they might be married, have a couple of kids. Um, that was all well and good. But if people just didn't want to go um, because they wanted to go to go somewhere and smoke pot or whatever, I was not in favor of that at all. Um, and I can't say that I was really happy with the way at that time it was pretty much college kids that uh, the way they treated the uh, the servicemen that they, they they thought that we shouldn't have been there doing what we were doing. And um, I find that very hard to um, to comprehend when I know probably six or eight people personally that are on the wall in Vietnam, the Vietnam Wall Memorial in, in Washington. Um, and you can't tell me that that was for nothing. Um, you know, these guys were buddies of mine, friends of mine, and they're no longer here. So I, I have a little bit of a different attitude about that, the, 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 the people that were against the war. Well, how about the protests that happened? What did you think about that? I really didn't get into much of them because I was not here when that was going on. For the most part, I, I missed all of those protests. They were really going on right towards the end. I was in the service from 65 to 69, and they were really going strong in the new year of 68. And I was not here. I was over on the, on the West Coast, and I was out on the uh, South China Sea, whatever, in the aircraft carrier. So... Uh, I didn't really get exposed to those firsthand. Um, I was not at all in favor of uh, first um, uh, Vietnam veterans against the war, which uh, our Secretary of State John Kerry um, instituted and, and, and was part of. Uh, I met him, and he met me. Uh, to this day, I don't like him. I won't, would never like him just because of what he did. Uh, I just I didn't approve of it at all. Um, we went into the service and we, we did what we were asked to do and um, we kind of got kicked in the face by, by uh, the people that were against the war and I don't think it was right. They, they don't do it now, they don't do it today, but they did it to us then. So there's a little bit of a chip on that one also. You know anyone who does the draft? Like anyone close to you? I wouldn't say dodge the draft. I know people that didn't go into the service. Um, because um, because they were in school, they had a, an education deferment, or uh, they also where they were married and they had children and they had deferment that way. Um, I don't know anyone that that you know personally that said, "Oh, I'm not going," and they went to Canada or something or burned their draft card. Um, I certainly heard about all of those, but I didn't, I didn't I wasn't I didn't know anyone you know personally that that did that. So after you got out of the military, what did you think of the service after that? I thought the service was was, was fine. Um, the service did exactly what I was hoping it was going to do. I grew up a bit while I was there. Um, I got out of the service on a Thursday. I came home from California, uh, and Nancy, my wife, met me at the airport. We came down here to the Cape the next day and had our rehearsal dinner. And on Saturday, I was out of the Navy 48 hours. I got married, and the following Sunday, nine days, seven days later, uh, eight days later, I um, started college, and my Navy experience um, helped me get through all of that, the, the, the college, and, and I was ready by that time. I was 20, 22, almost 23 when I started college, and uh, I had grown up enough to, sufficiently to, uh, I tackled college, and I tackled it with, a, you know, fairly well. So, uh, what were your thoughts about the Vietnam War after you left the service? Well, my thoughts about the war after I left the service. Well, I'm not. I'm not against the war. I think what what happened there is, if we, um, the Americans, had been allowed to go in there and um, go full throttle, um, we probably could have won that. 
Um, we didn't. They didn't want us to do that. They uh, kind of held their held us back. Um, as it turns out, I guess uh, you know. Maybe we should have been there. Maybe we shouldn't have been there. I don't know the answer to that. Um, what was your life like after you left the service? After, after I went to the service, it was fine. Um, as I said, I got married. You know, two days later, uh, and Nancy and I are still together now. Forty, almost forty-eight years later. Um, Everything was fine. Everything was fine. I, I did whatever growing up I had to do while I was there, and I'm, I'm very proud of what I did in the service, and uh, I think it did me a lot of good. So do you think that, like, after you got out of the service, like, um, do you think we should have gone back at, like, at some point and helped the South Vietnamese before they... Uh, they well, I think we tried because when I left there, it was it was uh, it was um, September of '69 when I got out of the service. End of September, um, the, the, we didn't totally get out of Vietnam until 1975. So we were still there, uh, still fighting going on, and still um, uh, winding down, if you will, all the way until 1975. So I I think we did what we could do. That's all. Well, after after the after nineteen seventy five, like af, like before the North Vietnamese took over Saigon, and but after American troops had left Vietnam, do you think there should have been a time when we should have gone back at all? No, I don't think so because I I, I don't think the, the 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 American government would allow us to do that. They kind of had us with one hand behind our back while we were there. Um, so I, I, I don't think we could have done anything differently. Well, um, like what, what's some more about you can, that you can say about some things that you did while in the military service? Like what did you do day, day by day? What were your, what were your jobs? Well, my job when I was on the aircraft, I mean, on the uh, dry dock down in Connecticut was um, we were in charge of the dock basin, which all the blocks that had to be built, we had to build those, and we would cut the wood. Um, the wood would come out on the pier, and then we would cut the wood, and, and, and we would have to set up the blocks um, that, the, that the, the submarine would then sit on when we pumped it up under, pumped up underneath it and lifted it out of the water. Um, We'd be building the blocks during the day if we had a sub in port in in in, in the basin. If there was a sub in, and we were uh, the repair crew from up on the base would come and work on the sub. Uh, we just did maintenance on the ship at the time, or we would be building blocks for our next uh, docking. We had to have different blocks for almost every sub that we docked because they're all different in shape, um, slightly, so that some of the blocks could could not be reused. Oh, they they could be reused. But only if we docked that submarine again. So if we uh, we docked, for example, the Dace, which was a nuclear, um, not a nuclear boat. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a nuclear boat, the Dace, and we docked that, and um, it um, had different side blocks than, for example, a conventional submarine, such as uh, the Nautilus. We docked, docked the Nautilus a couple of times. Um, so we had to have different blocks that we put in the in the basin. Um, so there was a lot of, a lot of work to set up and get it ready for the next submarine that was coming in. Um, routine we had routine we had to make sure that the watertight doors all worked, that the uh, ventilation systems all worked. Um, any carpentry that had to be done, uh, we redid the mess decks, uh, all the tables and the uh, formica and stuff. We did that while I was working on that ship. Um, any kind of a firefighting that was going on, we had to take care of. Any pumping that had to be done, we were in charge of the pumps. Um, so there was lots of different things that we were doing. Um, when I was on the, um, the aircraft carrier, my primary job was to teach damage control to the ship. Um, and, and in doing that, I would be teaching firefighting. I would be teaching how to protect ourselves against chemical, biological, and, and um, 
and nuclear warfare, and part of our job was also watertight integrity. All the ships, all the uh, doors and hatches on a um, aircraft carrier, which are plenty, uh, there are plenty of them, uh, they all have to be watertight, not all of them, but some of them are watertight, and those that are watertight, we had to test them to make sure that they were still watertight, and then airtight, so there was a lot of lot of maintenance work that we did on the aircraft carrier, and plus it was an older aircraft carrier, so it required a lot of maintenance. Just out of curiosity, how exactly would you test the the airtight or watertight doors? You would take the uh, watertight door has a, a a has a bead around it, and then when the door closes inside the door. There is a gasket. And that gasket has to close tightly against that bead when you dog down the door. You dog it down with these, these latches. And what you would do is you could um, put a chalk on the bead. And then when you close the door, you should have chalk on every bit of the gasket. And if you didn't, then you had to make an adjustment. And sometimes you'd have to actually get somebody to come in and weld a piece on that, on that edge. To, to raise it or lower it so that it would seat well against the gasket on the door. Well, uh, I'm not sure if I have anything else. <laughs> uh, <coughs> That's fine. All right, so I'm going to end the video now, and we can just get some pictures, I guess, of the other paraphernalia. Okay. Fine, whatever you want.